Morning folks, Massey Dave. Hope you're well. Sorry last night's video was a bit late going up, but the old interweb was on the go slow. Just for a change. Had a moan to BT. Say you don't mind paying for a service as long as you get consistency. But you don't. So they've tweaked something and I don't know whatever they've done. Got a four pound a month off anyway, so still probably got a crap service. Anyway, thank you for your comments and likes. Um, as always, welcome to new subscribers. Box of bits turned up uh, for the kingpins. A couple of comments about those, because obviously they were full of um, packing washers rather than thrust washer bearing. Yeah, uh, Kev Hamadan said some did, some didn't. Another one said should have had a bearing. So we'll put in what the kit has got in. And hopefully there'll be no slop in it. So we can only do what we can do. I don't know everything. Make it up as you go along. What else can you do? Try to do the best we can. And as you know, we do three videos a week, if we can get them uploaded. And it's all of whatever happens here. Could be anything. Could be a change of plan. Usually have a plan, don't go to plan, but never mind. That's the way it is. So uh, hope you enjoy what you see. You know, give us the old thumbs up and subscribe. Even if you don't watch it all, or fast forward through it. But drop us a comment, we'll get back to you. It's always appreciated. Anyway, I'm going to have a quick cup of tea, open that box, and see what we've got. Right, so we've got the bits and pieces here. Two new bushes go in the top and the bottom of that. We have a thrust washer, which is listed in the parts book. So, uh, yeah, and obviously we've got all these shim washers. That, uh, yeah. So we'll put it back as... It is listed and shown. We may have to use a couple of these to pack it out. The parts book does show there is one washer in the bottom underneath the bearing. So we'll, uh, we'll get this lot cleaned up, get these out of here, and then reassemble it. I've got the end of the grease cleaned off here. You can see how much, well, so there's still a fair bit of meat there, but there's virtually nothing this side uh, it's, yeah so we'll, we'll get this uh, beat out and then we'll offer it up against the new one and that's how we can get out in a sensible bit it might end up disintegrating and the other one the other end that's even worse so no wonder there's a lot of slop in it so we've carefully gone down through the side with the chisel and uh, just get a pair of suitable grips on there and hopefully that should Pull out. It was rather thin, but obviously the the new ones. You can see that there is a split in them where they're made, so you've got somewhere to somewhere to work to to break it. It's not like a completely solid thing, but uh, you can see that obviously this side here there wasn't a lot left. Very very thin, <clears throat> but yeah, it's a fair bit of uh, difference in thickness in that. So that should fit in there a treat when we get it pressed in and it'll be a nice tight snug fit probably won't see it on that shaft well that's a lot better no play on that at all so we'll get this turned over get the one out the other side give it another clean up and then get those new bushes uh, pressed in the hole See on the bottom side here, yeah, the casting's a bit had it here, seen better days, but you can probably see the thickness there and not a lot here. So we'll repeat that, we'll have a chisel, slice it down through, pull it out. There is the remains of the old bit, the other bit from the, oh, the bit that broke off of that, still down in the hole. Yeah. That'll tap out, made it a little bit easier. Had the old uh, reciprocating saw, just went down through enough. You can see that was the joint side, and that's the bit I cut. And that bit fell out, so I should be able to uh, get this bit out quite easily now. And that's that one extracted. So we'll give this a good clean up now, because we've got little bits of swarf and that in there. So, uh, yeah, brake cleaner. Good rag, get rid of all the rubbish in there. 
clean that shaft up. All right, we've got the top right side cleaned up. I'm just going around the edge here. There's a tiny little burr just there. And there's a little bit just here. Not a lot, but that would impede getting that going in. That would drag and probably end up bending it. So, another drill with a burr. Just gonna go around and clean that up. So hopefully we can get that squished in there without any problems. But yeah, that's quite quite a quite a burr there. Right, cleaned all that up. I've made sure there's nothing untoward in there. There is a little step down in the bottom, which would then limit how far that goes in. Now I could be an animal and just put it in there and beat it with a hammer, but no, I think I'm gonna try and make something. There's a clutch alignment tool I made up for, for uh, that might be the 399 we did, can't remember, one or the other. But that tube is just a fraction bigger than the diameter of that. So I've had me all very near, measured the spindle shaft size, which it should be the same as that. It'll fit in there. But this is a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to machine this down, just a little bit, not a lot, so that will fit in there and it'll have a little step on there, which will sit against the top of that. So then I can put that in, the whole thing supported, and we can just tap it in downwards, so we don't end up messing up the edges of the hair by having a big hammer smashing it. Don't really want to do that. So we'll go whiz that up in the lathe a minute. We'll whiz it down in size. So that fits on there. A treat to get that in. Then we can do the other side. Clean it up. Do the same again. Well, I'm no machinist, but we can get by. So I'll spun that down. And that should now fit in there. A treat. And we can now get that sat in there. And we've supported all the way around. And hopefully... That will go in, a little bit of lubrication. That should just tap in there quite nicely. Well, so far, so good. It's going in, it's keeping it square, and it's not curling the edges over because we're getting equal pressure all the way around. Yeah, I could put it in the press, but it's time to move everything. You just think outside the box and do something different. Well, that's one in, flush on the top. No damage on there whatsoever. So I think that worked a treat. So I'll flip it over and uh, do the bottom. Please with that. There we've uh, gone around with the burr, cleaned up nicely in there, bit of lubrication, just gently started it, and put the die tool in there. We give that a uh, little bit of persuasion now and that should hopefully slide home like we did with the top one. It was halfway there now. Probably get me out of fat hands in the way. Perfect. It's in and it's flush. Actually, just get a little bit more, a little bit proud there. Spot on. Right, so the new bearing, I've worked a whole load of grease into that. I've measured the height of what the all the washers were to the bearing and just found one of the washers a little bit thicker, so it's just a little bit more because there was a bit of bit of play up and down not a lot so that should be hopefully right so now we can just clean the shaft up drop it in put the new felt washer in the back of the bit there keyway in and hopefully that'll be about right well, i know it's got new um, 
bushes in there. But that's a very, a very tight fit. So I'm about to give the uh, stub axle shaft here a very good clean up because it was not going in that freely. So better luck this so attempt. It is a nice snug fit, I know that. But there's no gap there from what there was previously. That was flopping around pretty well. So yeah, it's in, happy days, and it turns. So we like that. Right, off to go and pick some bits up now. Uh, back from the running around, two and a half hours of my life disappeared. Now we got this one back together, got the top on, greased it up, nice and firm, no slop whatsoever. So we'll uh, tap the second one now. Right, you can definitely see the newness has worn off of this one. Bit of meat there, but nothing there. Uh, the side. Yeah, he's uh, pretty well the same. So we'll re repeat the procedure that I did this morning, get those changed, and uh, pop it back together. Well, that went a bit better than the first one. Got the hang of doing it now. A bit blindfolded nearly. So new one's put in the bottom there, and we're done. One in the top. Sorry, it's a bit repetitive, but there's two to do. So got to do what I do. So we'll clean up the, uh, the shaft. Uh, measure the bearings and the bushes that were in there. Hopefully get this one back together. Well, this one has obviously had uh, lack of grease for a long time, but then grease lately for the new owner. But yeah, it's going to take a bit of cleaning up because I don't want this slot scagging when it goes through the uh, the new bushes. So we're going to get this back to, yeah, nice and shiny. A lot of rust on there. Well, it's not going to go in as it is. That's for certain. There we go, all back together. The pair done, fully greased up. As you can see, red grease everywhere. No sloppy nose. So all we need now is the other bits to put that back together, but that'll be later next week. So that'll do for today. It's Friday, and I think it's bare o'clock. Got a bit of a sweat on, so bugger it, that'll do. We've achieved something. So I'm going to get some beer, go home. I'll see you all in the morning. Morning folks, Saturday morning, back here. Uh, we're tinkering a bit of wiring on the uh, 1250 cab here. Uh, thank you for your comments, lovely job. Um, yeah, let's crack on with this this morning. What have we got flashing here? Indicators. And we have a repeater working on the dash. So it should be the left, the right. Obviously we have to swap over. So I've only got one test thing here. Pull that one out of there and put it on that side. They work for the other side. And the flashy works on the dash. And obviously, because you can't get the five pin relays anymore, it's a three pin, it can only be wired up in such a way that you just have one flashy to let you know that the indicators are working. So, happy days with that. Indicators are functional. Also, you put two bulbs in your test rig because it needs the two 21 watt bulbs to make it flash at the correct speed. If one bulb's gone, it will only flash fast to let you know there's a bulb gone. So, indicators sorted. Right, now we've got the blue wire fit up on the fuse box for the, for the lights. So we have the side lights working. Yes, two big bulbs, I know. But, i me turn that off. Off. Side lights, side dipped, side main, and that's main work lights. That should be work lights only, but they're not wired up at the moment. But yeah. Bit more right, that's turned on for the high beam front lights, and we have the warning light works as well. This is getting better and better. We've also just got the uh, Mission switch fitted in, obviously light switch is now, light, yeah. light switch is now in there. Right, we've got power supply in on the fuse box properly. Obviously cable's not tidied up yet. But we now we have lower motor working, lower motor working, and windscreen wiper doing what it should do up there. Woohoo! Coming together nicely. do for today folks we got these done we got a bit done on that so could just call me axel
good as new. Call me the horsepower as well. Anyway, that'll do for today. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, click the old like subscribe, give us a thumbs up, drop us a comment. Might be a bonus video tomorrow. Wait and see. Till then, thanks Danny. Catch you later.